My name is Katherine Allen, and I'd uh, like to talk about some of my current research on family perspectives of gynecological cancer survivorship among older women who live in rural Appalachia. And this research uh, has been become very important to me um, because it's dealing with a population of women who uh, are living in a health disparity area, and uh, they're very far from um, health services and medical attention and although they have a history, a cultural history of uh, a lot of family support, um, they're often far away from the services that they need and uh, transportation is a problem and um, uh, many times they're caring for family members themselves and then uh, their families also have a lot of difficulties. And so I have been interviewing older women anywhere from uh, ages 50 to 80s and uh, even though uh, 50 is uh, middle-aged but um, given the type of cancers that they have had um, uh, the average age is uh, 48 so that's why we decided to go with uh, age 50 and so I've been interviewing them in their homes all over southwest Virginia and uh, finding out about um, their cancer experience, their cancer story, and uh, how they have uh, experienced the survivorship process. Um, of course, I found that these women are very strong and um, very connected to their family members, and um, they are all doing uh, amazing things and uh, having survived a devastating illness like gynecological cancer they uh, just have amazing stories and one of the main things that has helped them uh, is uh, someone going through the process with them so some of the ladies have talked about um, having a cancer buddy so family support has been really important having a husband or a sister or a daughter or a son sons are also very important in this research um, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, um, or best friend, but uh, at the particular time of having, um, of having cancer treatment, uh, having someone in their lives, and it's always been a woman friend, who really understands the treatment process and has the same kind of fears and hopes for survivorship uh, has been one of the key findings. Um, another key finding, because we're also interviewing um, one or two members of their family, and so we have 20 women in our study so far, and um, uh, so that would mean um, 60 family members, and we have almost all of those. And sometimes there's, uh, or often, there are differing perspectives about the cancer survivorship experience. And so there's a lot of ambiguity and uh, mixed feelings uh, about family relationships. And um, sometimes uh, how the women perceive their experience is certainly not the way that their family members perceive their experience. And uh, sometimes, let's say, a husband might perceive that he is uh, carrying the whole burden, he's working, he's doing the housework. Um, and then maybe the other person that we talk to in that family, the best friend of the cancer survivor, uh, might say about this particular person that he's, um, he hasn't been all of that supportive. As a matter of fact, his life has been difficult because his wife, who had always provided the emotional support in the family, was less available to him. And then there's other experiences where um, an older cancer survivor um, may talk about how she's a very burdened because she's caring for a disabled family member. Uh, so not only does she have to deal with her own experiences, but she has um, a disabled husband um, or a disabled child. And so uh, in one particular case, we interviewed um, this particular woman had no children and uh, very few family members left. And so we interviewed two of her uh, good friends uh, who had served as like surrogate daughters to her. 
and uh, their stories about her experiences of caregiving for her husband were quite different than her perceptions in that uh, they thought that she was um, less than kind to her spouse and was actually very resentful that he was unable to care for her. And then there were other stories of um, women talking about how they really pushed themselves to get through this cancer experience and to survive. They really saw their family's need for them as uh, an essential part of their survival process. For example, one woman's son had uh, been murdered um, in a very tragic experience, and she felt that um, her grandson, her, her son's child, only had her left. And so she worked very hard through difficult circumstances. They had absolutely no money, very low income, and uh, no transportation. And she worked very hard to find the resources that she needed so she could be there for her grandson. Um, this was a very empowering story. And then in another circumstance, a woman um, had a very loving husband, two fabulous dogs that she was very attached to. She also had no, she had no children. And then um, her husband and sister provided a lot of care for her during her treatment, drove her to the hospital when she was getting her cancer treatment, did a little cooking and cleaning. And then she, <clears throat> her sister had a terrible car accident and could no longer walk. And so one of the things that uh, she said that was really important to her was that she had to get better so that she could help her sister now that she had become disabled. So these people that I interviewed have demonstrated tremendous resilience, which is characteristic of people in rural Appalachia. Um, and yet there was a lot of variation in this kind of resilience that they demonstrated. Uh, another um, aspect of um, the culture in Appalachia um, is a sense of uh, deep commitment to religiosity. And there was a great variation here in terms of some women um, who were very religious did not attribute their uh, experiences to, to faith, nor did they think that um, their God had anything to do with their cancer or their recovery. Whereas other women felt that um, their faith, their perceptions about God had everything to do with it. So in some sense, this uh, finding was uh, very interesting and it um, showed that some of the cultural beliefs about this area, there, were, there was some value to that, there were also some distinctions as well, showing some individuality in how culture plays out in women's lives. Of course, family was very important to everyone, but friendship was, I would say, almost equally important. And people did convert their friends into like family members. And these older women really relied on their friendships as sources of support, uh, as people that drove them to the hospital, as people that they called every day, and often just calling someone when you're going through an experience like this was more helpful than having visitors because you got to control or they got to control the, uh, the, you know, the kind of traffic that came through their homes some you know cancer survivorship cancer recovery is very exhausting as these women explained um, and so having this sense of agency about who came to see them and selecting who was there was very important of course their family members lives and the problems in their family members lives uh, was also a consideration and the women were very proud of their family members and often talked about their successes but one of the values of qualitative research is you can spend a long time with people and as they relaxed and let their hair down and were talking longer many of the issues that they did worry about in terms of their family lives did come through for example, a daughter going through a divorce um, and, uh, or 
Uh, another situation would, be, of course, um, spouse's illnesses was always the problem. Um, in another situation, one of the, uh, one of the daughters who was providing caregiving was totally overloaded. She herself had a full-time job at a convenience store. She was in the community college getting a nurse's aides degree. She was uh, dealing with a disabled husband herself who was um, in a typical profession in this area, had an accident in the mining, in the mines, and also was raising her own grandchild because her daughter was in prison for drug-related charges. She had a lot of pressure on her and she was also providing care uh, and support for her mother who was uh, in the recovery process from cancer treatment. So uh, in this sense we were seeing a lot of intergenerational um, survivorship and also assistance uh, across mothers and daughters as well. One final thing I would like to mention is uh, an aspect of the research that I have done and championed, and it has to do with um, understanding one's motivations for the kind of research that they do. And, of course, uh, we know a lot about particular kinds of cancers, but very little about older women and gynecological cancer survivorship. And so I um, became interested in this project because my own mother uh, got gynecological cancer and died within a very short time of ovarian cancer when she was 75. We expected my mother to live into her 90s because people in my family tend to live until they're 100. And it was a shock to our family and uh, very sad to lose our beloved mother in just a very short period of time. And as it would happen, uh, serendipity often plays into our choices of research topics. I was invited by my colleague at Virginia Tech, Dr. Karen Roberto, who is the director of the Center for Gerontology here, to uh, get involved in this study on older women and cancer, and we chose to pursue the gynecological pathway. And uh, having some insider's knowledge about this was uh, really helped me to have a, um, a very conscious sense of what I was getting into when I went to interview these women. And although I didn't share my own experience with this as the daughter of someone who had survived, I was able to, I think, uh, I do think it enhanced my sensitivity to um, women and their family circumstances and to understand that people's lives are so complicated and that there probably would be um, some uh, difficult circumstances with people's children and their spouses and their networks and having to marshal resources. And so owing to the feminist perspective that I have always adopted in my research, um, I was able to take this reflexive approach and put it into my research to help uh, sensitize me to what might be happening in these women's lives. And as a result of that, um, this has been a very fascinating and I believe important study and I'm very grateful that I've been able to participate in it.